We got Piper in. I met her at a half-like little thing that we had. Half like supplemental coaches. I said, well, you know, it'll make no sense. I met, I met Piper, wonderful young lady. She's going to ask me a couple questions, then we'll get started, OK? I Come on, have man. questions for her from the audience. Oh, you got questions for Piper? Yeah. So. Okay, can we can we get her higher so they can see her? Yeah. Give her a little cushion or something. Piper, you know what? Just stand up, baby. Stand up. Yeah, there you go. It's going to be able to get you from there. Yep, perfect. So they can see you. Okay, Roma, you have the first question. Go ahead. Piper, I want to know, how excited are you to work with Aflac and Coach Prime? I'm so excited and happy to be here. I get to meet the team and work with the amazing Coach Prime uh, to beat Baylor on Saturday. Stun on them, Piper. I'm ready to do whatever it takes <laughs> right, for the team. Go Buffs. That's right, Piper. All right, we have one more question from Nikki. Uh, Piper, tell us about how you met Coach Prime. I met Coach Prime this summer at Children's Hospital Colorado for an event with Aflac, and I told him what a huge buff fan I was. Um, he was so kind. Um, after talking more, he invited me to a game to help him coach. That's right. We Thank need all the help we can get, Piper. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Piper. Very nice. Come on, let's get a picture. Who oh, has the camera? Come on. Come over here, Piper. Put your shades on, baby. They hate oh. it when we do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was last week. <laughs> you got it? Thank you. Put that on my story and put it out right now, please. Uh, uh, great win last week. Had a couple days off. We practiced on Sunday and Mondays off. Uh, come back today. I don't think it was a great practice today, but it was a good practice today. My expectations are climbing with them, and I know what they can and cannot handle. Yeah, but they they gave a tremendous effort. We're trying to clean up some things, even from last week. That game is behind us, but we're trying to move forward and make sure we truly understand the physicality from week to week. Uh, when we're more physical, understand our uh, just basic fundamentals, we're able to run the ball effectively. It's, it's, it's one thing. It's always one thing that we miss one guy or, or we let one guy get in the gap that disables and disarms us from being the best that we could be. Other than that, I think uh, we had a good day today. Coordinators implement good, um, have implemented great game plans. I can't wait to see how it plays out because I know things change during the week. I don't foresee anybody that was truly injured last week that probably won't be with us. We may get a couple guys back this week from uh, off the injury report, but all is good, all is well. Let's go. Nikki, go ahead. Um, hi, Coach G. Edwards. Nikki Edwards, two Sports Report. When you look at Baylor and this team, what are you guys specifically game planning for? Um, first and foremost, you know, every, every week is the same thing. We want to be able to run the ball effectively. We want to be able to stop the run. Uh, their coach has done a great job. Coach Rand has done a great job of uh, having this team – discipline and the things that they do well, they really do well. We got to, first of all, stop the run. I don't know which quarterback they're going to feature this week, but we're preparing for both quarterbacks. But that team, uh, they they have athletes, they're physical, they're strong. Um, they don't make a lot of mistakes, to, uh, self-inflicted wounds. I know they fumbled uh, a few times, uh, but that happens. That happens with us. It happens with everybody. But um, where he's taking his program is phenomenal. Coach Taylor Sadusky, Sports Illustrated. Um, through like the first three games, a lot of praise for the O line, but specifically on Jordan Seaton. What have you seen through him and like being like the true freshman that he is? Um, Jordan is coming slowly but surely. He's understanding footwork and uh, technique is everything. Because at this level, you can't overpower, over muscle, or out athletic others. He's doing a great job of listening to some of the best teachers that I've seen in quite a long time. When you you know Phil and Garner and, and Big George. All of them chime in to complete these guys. But I love where Jordan is mentally and physically. Hey, Coach. I'm Pat Graham, Associated Press. How uh, you doing, sir? Good. Uh, Two-parter on Travis real quick. Um, I guess you had Champ Bailey and Charles Woodson back in the day play mm -hmm. both ways. In today's college football, does it make what he's doing at a high level even more remarkable? Yes, because it's a lot of teams are tempo, so he don't get a lot of rest. And just think about this. I just got – finished talking to scouts about this, about what he can and cannot do. Um, pros go to huddle. So he's even getting more time to rest. 
So most teams you play, they run some type of a tempo or the transition is much uh, greater than pros from snap to snap. So with him getting that amount of rest, rest, he cannot help but be a great pro. The practice are, practices are limited. There's barely no contact. You can't even hit a receiver downfield in the NFL no more. So I think he's a, a great complement to that game, and he could continue to do what he's doing now. The second part of that is um, he says that like when you guys go fishing, he looks forward to it because you give him life lessons. I guess Yeah. what kind of lessons do you talk about with him? Everything, just- man. It's, it, you know, some of that stuff is a little private, but we talk about everything. Um, and he's not the only one. So I, when I say I genuinely love these kids, I, I genuinely really do. It's not about what they can do for me on the football field. It's about what I can help them with in life. They're football players. Some of these guys are definitely going pro. But I just want to equip them with the, the weapons to win life because, you know, football has changed. The landscape, landscape has changed in football. Once upon a time, you guys never attacked college players. Now they're making more money than y'all. And some of y'all are envious and jealous about that. So you're on the tech. It was hands off a college player because he's an amateur. Remember? Remember that, guys? Now it's hands on. Go at them. Any kind of way you want. They're making more money than me, and I'm mad about it. I'm, I'm upset about it. And when you attack them, attack them, attack them, these guys are sensitive. They've never been attacked. Most of them are out of high school or two years or three years uh, in college, but they're still sensitive to, to slander. They hadn't gone through what a grown man, what I've been going through with y'all for years. They haven't done that. So it is what it is. I know you're going to do your job and what you must do, but your job does not say in attack. Like, if they didn't play well, leave it at that. But the personal stuff, leave it to be personal. Because if we start flipping the script on y'all, you wouldn't like it. I can easy. Thank you, Lord, for stopping me there. there. Oh, that was almost a good one. That would have went viral. <laughs> He's a great kid. Hey, Coach. Brian Howell for Bullet Daily Camera. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know you guys you know, prepare for every game the same, but now that you guys are in conference. I'm sorry, Brian. God is so good. God, God. You, you, you got to hear. Sometimes you, you got to hear. When I just heard stop, I'm sorry. I would have kept going, but I heard stop. And I'm thanking God for that moment. I'm sorry, Brian. That's right. Uh, I know you guys prepare for every game the same, uh, but now that you're in conference play, is there maybe some – Heightened importance on tightening things no. up like the penalties no. and all those things. No, just because it's a conference game, it's still a football game. It's still a football game. I mean, you you don't want to be penalized. Nobody wants to be penalized. I don't give a darn if it's a scrimmage. Um, I'm not going to say a game is a game because you guys know rivalries are rivalries. That That is that. Um, you guys make more of it than we do because we know we got to win no matter who's on the opposing side. But no, no, we don't. Say, oh, this is a conference game. We got to go harder. If you got to go harder, you, you shouldn't be out there going anyway. Hey, Coach. Uh, I'm just hoping if you could update us on a few injuries. Uh, first off, Dallin Hayden. Um, we don't know where he is right now or what he wants to do. You know, I, I like to see it at practice before I see it in the game. So if he's able to play, he's going to play. Uh, Chidoze? Same thing. And then TC? TC's out. TC's out. He's out, out. Coach, Adam Mustard Tiger, 24-7 Sports. DJ McKinney's play has been maybe a little bit overshadowed by what Travis Hunter's done early this season. Obviously, DJ's got, DJ's got the length. What, what else does he bring uh, well, to that position? Well, it's overshadowed to y'all, not to us. You guys don't mention him, but we mention him every every minute, every moment we can. I mention him every day to the scouts, and they're asking me about him every single day we practice. DJ is long, could run, competes. Um, I don't know if he's – May have given up one or two passes on the season, probably for not even 20 yards or probably 17 yards. The kid can flat out play the game. He practiced with the same tempo, the same level of consistency. Um, He's a first-round pick to me. Um, Maybe not this year, but next year for sure. And I know if he has any aspirations of going into the draft, he wants to be a first-rounder. That's why I'm saying that. And I think the guy has all the qualifications to be a first-round pick, high first-round pick. Hey, Coach, with potential rain in the forecast for Saturday. We we'll, got rain? What forecast you got? Just changed this morning. No, let me see. I don't get, I don't have, it ain't say rain on mine. Who do you use? <laughs> Straight up. Uh, I just saw it from a local meteorologist this morning. It, there, there you go. A meteorologist? That's a mistake. I got 5169. This joke has been accurate. Anybody else got? Read yours. 
Either way, let's just say there is rain on the. No, in the we're not going to say there is rain. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those good weather men. When you say sixty percent, I say forty percent. Forty percent chance that the meteorologist that I respect highly said that there's a pretty what, good what chance it rains say? on Saturday. Thirty percent. Okay, I don't know what which one I got. I mean, need to check mine. <laughs> rain does not. Uh, I was just going to ask if you do wet ball drills or anything different to prepare for. Yeah, that. with rain, rain thirty percent is 30, 70 percent. It won't. Let's do drills that, that say it won't rain. How, how, how is that, like, prominent, like a wet ball drill? It's something that you see done in football. Didn't yeah, I mean, we've done every type of thing. Like, you got to understand, like, we, we got a bunch of people who know football. Like, we're going to do everything we can to uh, put our guys in the best situation possible. Um, that may come after practice, that may come before practice, but we're not going to take time out in practice to do a drill based on something that may not happen. Troy Finnegan, CU Sports Support. I know you've been very complimentary of Micah all yes. since he's been here. Yes. But was it even eye-opening for you to see the difference in the run game? I know there's a lot of factors that go into it. And yeah. Does that change kind of the, the, Don't, the way that you look at the split? Let's forward? not put that on the backs. All our backs are good. I've been saying that since day one. Um, we have to have the proper blocking for those guys to make it happen. So um, I think all our guys would have hit it. All our guys would have made certain runs. Mike could give you a, a physicality, uh, a, a low center of gravity. He gives you all of that, but I'm not going to lift one up and put one down like we so eloquently do. Um, all those guys could run. He did a phenomenal job, especially as a, a true freshman, but he got here in the spring and got ready, got physically and mentally and psychologically ready for his moment. And he excelled. Scott Proctor, the Colorado coach. How you feeling? Good, good. A um, couple of players show love to uh, D.C. Robert Livingston after the game on Saturday. Yeah. Has this surprised you at all, how quickly he's adapted to this specific unit and how quickly he's adapted to being a first-time play caller? Not, not exactly whatsoever. Exactly what you expected to be. He's more. Um, that's why he's hired, because what he brought to the table in the interview and, and dissecting the teams that we're going to play before he even got the job, um, there's something that happened in the interview process. His communication skills, um, the several young men that called me to validate him um, that are professionals that have played for him in the NFL, and uh, just his overall willingness to listen to a wealth of knowledge in that defensive meeting room and not just be a dictator. You got to understand he's very wise because he came here alone. What I mean by alone, yes, he has a wife, a wife and four kids, but he came here not bringing one of his guys in. So oftentimes that's a tough scenario to coach in when you don't have your own guys at the certain positions. But he's done it uh, seamlessly, and I'm proud of him. Really, really, truly proud of him. Hey, Coach, a couple quick questions for you. Can you clarify uh, with TC when you say out, out? TC's out, out. He has surgery. Okay, so he's down for the year? Um, he's out. Okay. Mm. And, and then another question is, uh, three games in, you know, Shadour's obviously had you know, several offensive coordinators. He had to adjust a lot throughout his mm -hmm. career. Uh, what do you feel like that – how do you feel like that adjustment's been going for him three games in with Pat Sherman? Um, great. Um, <laughs> Shador's a pro, man. You guys know that. I'm not telling you nothing you don't know. And whenever, bless you, whenever we give him time, we understand the results. There's never, there hadn't been one game in his career here that he's had time to do what he needed to do that he has failed you. Um, I just happened to be on site his entire career, and I know what he's comprised of. The kid can play this game. Uh, what Coach Shermer brings to the table is, is, is unbelievable with the communication process. Uh, you would have to hear it and understand it throughout the week and sit down, you know, coming together on game plans and situational football and listens to what he sees. He may see something out there, pre-snap, whatever, that we don't see because we're not out there. And uh, it's phenomenal the, the adjustments he's, he makes in using the tablets to his – finest moment on the sideline, that's an additive toward, to us and how he sees the game. He's played a lot of football. Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera. Coach, you touched on this a little bit after the game on, uh, on Saturday, but the O-line obviously really responded yes, on sir. Saturday night. Th that confidence boost for them, what, what can it do for them going forward oh. and, and maybe building on that going yeah. into conference play? Great question. It's a tremendous, uh, tremendous asset to just the, the confidence of the O-line what they've got because you guys not you guys but whoever whoever did it they beat them up pretty badly um, 
I'm proud of those guys. I know what they have inside of them. I believe in them. I've been believing them, believing in them since day one. And uh, they just had one bad outing. They didn't. They didn't have it all together. But we still did some um, promising things in the Nebraska game, although that's in the past. So we just build on each play and try to perfect each play and move on to the next. But I truly believe in those guys, run and pass. Lincoln Roach, CU Independent. So with Baylor not yet deciding on their starting quarterback, mm -hmm. uh, will there be any differences in how you handle Daquan Finn versus Sawyer Robinson? Yeah, I mean, it, that comes down to calls. You know, third downs and situational calls where one guy's more likely to scramble out of the pocket and run. One guy's going to get rid of it quickly out of his hand to uh, try to move chain. So, yeah, that, that has a factor in when you're calling it during, throughout the game. But as far as the preparation, um, you got to prepare like you're going to prepare for, for both of them. But one guy features a, a different asset than the other. That's definitely true. Coach Harrison Samuel on School Bus Sports, how important for you has it been to stay focused and maybe not too reactionary after three very different results in the first three games of the year? Um, say that first part again. I'm sorry. Um, going into conference play, how important for you has it been to stay focused and maybe not as uh, not too reactionary with three very different results to start um, the season? I don't really react too much. I may check some things, but I don't really react too much. I try to give you guys a consistency and a balance of who I am, what I am, and how I am. And I want that from our young men as well. So I try not to react to some of the, the foolishness that I hear and see um, consistently. Um, our young men, we got to do a better job of equipping them with the ability to just keep on going and don't look either right or left or don't look at the hate or the cheers. Just keep on going. John Treach, nine Hey, can years. you give my man some water, please? You got a bottle of water? No, I'm not trying to bear I'm serious. We got to get, get him a bottle of water, please. I'm sorry, my neck is gone. I can't even turn my darn head. Yes, yes, sir. As you enter Big 12 play, what are you most excited about or what are you most confident in with your team? I'm not excited about as we enter Big 12 play. Like every game is big play, whether it's the 12 before the preceding uh, or whatever. Every game is at that level for us that we want to come out here and compete and give you our best, our absolute best. I know this is a conference game and it means a lot more to a lot of people, but every game means a lot to us. Every single game. It's not like we say, this is Big 12 and these are the rest of them. No, we got to approach every game like it's a stern Super Bowl, like it's the last one that we may ever play or be a part of it to coach. More football specific, I know it's a small sample size, but Baylor leads the entire country in pass defense and net punting. So they're owning the field position game. What kind of challenge is that? We got to be who we are. We got to run the ball effectively. We got to – our receivers are a tough cover. When we're protecting our quarterback, our receivers are a tremendously tough cover. So I don't wish that on anybody. I, I feel like we, we could do some phenomenal things as they feel like they could shut us down in some areas of concern. But our guys are pretty good. We just got to – Give our quarterback a little time, and we're okay. Last one, Taylor, go ahead. You and RG3 have a great relationship. Yeah. Have you guys had any just lighthearted talks about going up against No, Tomorrow? but I, I know I'm going to get a text some, some way, somehow this week. You got to understand, RG3, when he was at Baylor, it was uh, poetry in motion. He had uh, the country by the throat, and he was applying pressure. Uh, I love what he stands for as an athlete, as a, as a father, as a man, period, uh, especially for our culture. I got none but love for RG3. But I'm pretty sure he's going to have, he's going to be conflicted inside because he wants us to do our thing, but that's his alma mater. So I'm pretty sure he's leaning. He's going to be wearing green with probably a gold necklace on. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you and God bless. <laughs>